In the previous lesson, what we did was introduce justice as fairness, the construction that Rawls formulates for the creation of a just, liberal, democratic society. Now, we finished that lesson by thinking about, well, what are the actual ways in which we can decide what are the just principles that we find, for example, in the first of the major, um, major characteristics of justice as fairness? Well, the answer to that question is Rawls's original position, the thought experiment that he devises uh, within which we see how a society would create and formulate a just um, system and a just construct. But this lesson is going to look at the original position. I personally think that the original position is a particularly genius piece of um, philosophical thought experiment, uh, and I'll explain why as we go on. And essentially, the Rawlsian concept of justice as fairness provides this basic framework for a just liberal society. That's what we have already got. Now, one might notice that there are still conceptions which are relatively abstract and don't seem to provide much in the way of this pragmatic and practical application of philosophical principles. Things that we were saying in the first lesson or the second lesson were really important to John Rawls. So this idea is something that needs to be uh, needs to be worked on and formulated in a better way. Well, the idea of the original position is what Rawls constructs as an answer to this problem, to taking anything that's abstract, that is still abstract, and really applying that uh, effectively to making practical uh, applications to philosophical principles. It provides for the practical application of these ideas and the basis for a just liberal society. So I'm going to explain the original position and I'm going to use as many examples as possible. And, and the reason why is because it can be quite difficult for people to get their heads around initially. And I'll explain the components of the original position as well. So things like the veil of ignorance. And we'll talk about what these things actually mean and how it would work. So with the original position... What Rawls is inviting us to do is to conceptualize a thought experiment. He's not saying that we're going to actually do this in the real world because it's probably impossible to do. Um, but the idea is to conceptualize a thought experiment. He asks us to imagine a, system, a situation whereby every single citizen in a society is given equal representation in a discussion about how one ought to construct a just society. I believe in the writings themselves, he argues that this person is a is a representative of the person, not the actual person themselves. But that's a, a, a minutia in terms of the detail. So he says that we can construct a world where, let's say we have a big town hall meeting, OK, with every single person within the society. And every single person in the society has equal representation. They all have an equal say in what is the best way to construct a just society. Let's say the, the town hall meeting is the just society construction meeting, okay? And we're talking about, okay, we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about the actual things we want to construct a just society. Now, imagine it as a blank canvas and it's like we're going to build a society, we're going to build the socio-legal institutions, we're going to build the policies and everyone is going to have an equal say. Now, at this point... You might think, well, if that happens, nobody is ever going to agree on anything because some people are going to want some things, some people are going to want other things. You're going to have people saying that they are um, that they that they're hard done to economically and socially, and so they want more. But they have those people who think that they are uh, that they uh, don't deserve that, and all of these different things. Okay, so and so obviously at this point the blank canvas would not particularly get filled with anything of any kind of detail or interest, okay? But this is what the original position is at this point, okay? It is inviting us to conceptualise a, a big meeting with all of the people um, within a society, all having equal representation, discussing how to build a society. Now, the next feature of the original position is what is the key deciding factor that causes the construction of the just society in Rawls's view, which is this idea of placing the representatives behind what he describes as a veil of ignorance. So we have everyone in our society, we have everyone in our meeting, okay? And now what happens then is they all get put into a veil of ignorance or put behind a veil of ignorance. And what the veil of ignorance will do is deprive all members of this new society any knowledge about their position within said society, okay? So they will not know anything about themselves. They will not know their race, their gender, their wealth, their income, their class, anything at all, okay? And so 
the parties do, however, know that everyone in society will have different life plans and ambitions and that the society will be not one of infinite resources. There will be a scarcity of resources. OK, so let's say you go into this meeting. OK, but before you go into this meeting, you get put through a machine and it wipes your memory of any uh, understanding. So you don't know whereabouts you are in um, in this in, in this construct of society. You don't know your race. You don't know your gender. You don't know your wealth, your income, your class. You don't know anything like that. OK. But what you do know is that everyone in this in this big meeting, A, has equal representation in this big meeting. So they all have an equal say and an equal voice. Uh, B, they all have different life plans and ambitions, but we just don't know what these life plans and ambitions are because we don't know where each of us are within within the society. And we know that in the middle of the society, let's say, there's a big stash of wealth. There's a big stash of money. And that is the scarcity of resources. That is all we have to construct a society. Okay, We have a big uh, pile of money, let's say, and then that is all we have. Now we have to construct a society out of this amount of uh, scarcity of resources. The reason why Rawls uh, formulates this, this final point here is because of A, we do have a scarcity of resources in society. Resources aren't infinite. And so as a result of that, we have to construct a way in which we can get the best benefit for the most amount of people. And that is to uh, to make basically make the absolute most out of this scarcity of resources. So other um, uncontroversial things that obviously we, we know about within the, within the veil of ignorance is basic facts of human social life. So anything like that. The most important thing is that you do not know whereabouts within society you are placed, whether you are black or white, whether you are a man or a woman, whether or not you're rich or poor, whether or not you have a good job or a bad job, whether or not you were born into a wealthy family or or into a working class family, all of these different things, you don't have a clue, okay? You don't know what any of these things, uh, whereabouts you are. Now, what... Uh, from, so from these different situations, we've, we've, we've constructed this thought experiment. The representatives are now going to design a society and they're going to design a society that will best suit their interests. OK, and what Rawls argues is that nobody, because nobody knows that whereabouts they are within society, they don't know if they're upper class, lower class, black, white, etc., etc. They will agree to create a system that is the most just for the most amount of people. Because they're acting in their best interest. Because if you don't know whereabouts you are in that society, it is in your best interest to construct a society that best serves the interests of the most amount of people. To sort of hedge your bets in a way. To sort of get to a position where, well, when I do get back my, my information about where I am in the society, I know I'll be happy because this society, regardless of where I am within it, is going to is going to serve the best interest for the most amount of people. So even if I'm really, really poor or I'm from a uh, from a minority ethnic background, all these different things, okay, it doesn't matter because I've now constructed a society that is to the benefit of these people as well as to the benefit of the most of everybody else. That is the idea of the veil of ignorance, okay? There can be no arbitrary benefits that are just granted to some citizens over others since this would not best represent the best interest of the people in question because these people are behind the veil of ignorance. So if you're behind the veil of ignorance, you don't know whereabouts you are in society, okay? You're not going to agree to some arbitrary benefits for the upper classes because you might not know if you are upper class or not. And you're thinking, well, why would I do that? It's not in my interest to do that. Okay. Whereas if we were constructing this society before everyone goes into a veil of ignorance, let's say before they do that, we're all sat around a society, the people who are of the, 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 the highest wealth in society are going to want the arbitrary benefits for them. They, they are going to want the tax cuts. They are going to want all of these different things. And so... As a result of that, um, taking away their knowledge of where they are in society is what Rawls argues is the ways in which we can construct a society that is the most just for the most amount of people that serves the best interest of everyone. Because everybody who is constructing the society within the original position is serving their own best interest in trying to make this construction.